So I hope by now you've gotten a general idea of how Chroma Scan works. In this next section, we're going to cover some advanced techniques that will help your workflow along. Specifically, we're going to talk about how to add custom names and places to Chroma Scan so that you can tag your photos a little quicker. We're going to talk about importing a family tree. And then we're going to also cover how to edit and batch edit metadata. So if you need to fill in some metadata after you scanned it, you can do it inside the application. We're going to talk about how to get your photos off of your iPhone if you're not using cloud sharing. And finally, we're going to talk about a feature called playlists. So by this point, you should know that you can tag people names in your photos by using the relationship manager or by saying the names of the people in your description if they also happen to be in your phone's contacts. So what do you do about people's names that aren't in these places? Well, that's where custom names comes in. It's an easy way to feed the names of the people you know into the offline voice recognition engine so that you can use them later for tagging in your photos. Let's see how it's done. You get to custom names through the settings panel. Now tapping on this plus symbol allows you to add names to your voice recognition vocabulary one at a time, but there's a much faster way of doing it. This item called names.txt is a text file that holds groups of your custom names. If you don't have a CloudSync provider turned on, you can edit this file in app just by sliding it over to the left and then tapping on the edit button. From here, you can type in name after name and you just have to separate each one with a carriage return. Now I find this easier than adding a single name, but there's an even faster way to do this if you have CloudSync turned on. So I'm just gonna hit cancel here. Now if you do have iCloud or Dropbox turned on, go to the Chroma Scan folder and open the settings folder and then open the names.txt file with a standard text editor. From here, you can type or paste in groups of names to your local vocabulary. Just make sure that you add a carriage return after each name, but don't add one to the very last name. When you're done, just save it and the changes go back to Chroma Scan instantly, and then you can see these new additions by tapping on the names.txt file. This means that these names have been added to your local vocabulary and you can use them for offline voice recognition so you can tag those people names in your photos. Now let's see how this works. To add the names of people to people metadata, you just say their names one by one, just like you're giving a scanning command. Just make sure that the voice control indicator is green and then say the full name and then wait for the acceptance tone before you give another one. Let's try out a few just to see how it works. Vincenzo Lennox. Helga Bounds. Clemmy Earnshaw. Clear People. Columbus Waldrop, Francis Schroeder, Ariberto Frisk, Clear People, Chiquita Nice, Barry Goldschmidt, Leslie Sedano. As you can see, ChromaScan's local recognition is effective against even hard to pronounce names, but what if you get a really pesky one that refuses to be recognized? Well, luckily there's a built-in aliasing system that allows you to map an easy to recognize English word for a harder to recognize name. Let's see how this works. I'm first gonna navigate to my custom names panel and then tap on the names.txt file where I should see a list of my names. I'm gonna scroll down to a particularly hard name to pronounce. Now, I had to search the internet for hard to pronounce names, and I ended up with this Polish soccer player. Now, there's a chance that the regular voice recognition engine might recognize this name correctly, but it would be much easier to substitute out an easy to recognize English word instead. So to do this, I'm just gonna slide the name over to the left and then tap on the edit button. From here, I'm going to add the word goalie into this name as a substitution and then hit save. And then notice how the name turned amber in color. And that's an indication that I've placed a substitution there. Now, back in scan mode, instead of saying that goalie's full name, I could just say the word goalie. Goalie. And Chroma Scan recognizes it and substitutes the full name. It's just as easy as that. Geotagging your photos with accurate location metadata serves two important purposes. First, once you embed this information into your photos, you can search across your entire photo library based on city name or street or place. You get the idea. The other great reason is that whoever gets this image will know exactly where it was taken. Now, 
Chroma Scan's online voice recognition engine is pretty good at turning location information that you give in your description into geolocation data that gets embedded into your photos. There are times, however, where you might have lots of photos taken in like, for example, a childhood home or a school or an aunt's house, and it might be a bit long in the tooth to say the full address every time you want to tag that photo. Fortunately, Chroma Scan has a way of pre-storing exact locations that you can call up with just two words. Let's see how it works. Custom locations work similar to the Relationship Manager and Custom Names. Start by going to the Settings folder in the Chroma Scan directory in either iCloud or Dropbox and opening up the location.txt file with any plain text editor. From here, you can add a place name or an address, one per line, and then separate each with a carriage return. Now, here's a few tips that will help make sure that we get the location accurate. If it's a place name, try to add a city or state or a city or country to make sure we get the right one. You can add full addresses here as well. And if you ever want to double check if we're getting the right location, try copying that location and pasting it into either Google or Apple Maps. Now, if it gets right to the right point, we should find it as well. If not, try fine tuning the location by adding more data and then trying again. Once you're done, save the text file and the changes come back to Chroma Scan. Now, using custom locations is easy. You would just give your normal description, and then after the description metadata gets recognized, use offline mode to say the word location followed by the preset number. Now, you can find all the preset numbers by swiping up from the metadata panel until you see this new panel. Each location has a preset number, and this is the one you'll want to use after the location command. Location 6. So there it is, that's Custom Places. It's an easy way to store and geotag your favorite locations. If you maintain a family tree, you can import these names into Chroma Scan for use with our local voice recognition engine. Now I should mention upfront that this isn't a great solution if you have a huge family tree with hundreds or thousands of people and only a few of them are likely to be in photographs that you intend to scan. The better alternative in that case is to use the name.txt file with custom people. Now, on the other hand, if most of the people in your family tree are likely to be subjects to be tagged, then this is a great way to get them all into Chroma Scan in one shot. To use this feature, your family tree software needs to produce an intermediary file called GEDCOM. Once you have that exported, email it to yourself to an account that you can collect on your iPhone running Chroma Scan. Next, open that email message and then tap and hold onto the attachment until you see this dialog box open. Then scroll through the applications until you get to Chroma Scan and then tap on it. Chroma Scan should then launch and import your GEDCOM file just like this. You'll then see this list in the Custom Peoples panel. And if you ever need to delete it, you can just slide it over to the left and then tap the delete button. And that's really it. Your family tree is now imported into Chroma Scan and then you can use these family members in local recognition mode. There are times when you're scanning where you don't necessarily have all the information you need, or maybe later you need to change some of the metadata in your photos. Well, that's easy to do for single images or in batch, and let's take a look at how you do it. I'm gonna to jump to a photo that I know has some metadata that I need to change. This photo is missing some metadata for one of the persons, and it doesn't have a location that's precise enough because I just didn't know it at the time. Down here in the toolbar, I'll tap on this icon that looks like a tag, and that will open up my tag editor. From here, I can modify or add information that I didn't get during the scanning phase. I can modify any of the fields to write new metadata back down to the image. So in this case, I'm gonna add another person by separating the existing one with a comma and then typing in a new name. The next thing I wanna do is update the location and I can do that by typing in any of these fields, but there's a much easier way to do it. And that's by tapping onto this map icon down at the bottom and then a map will open up and center on the photo's current location. From here, I can pinch or zoom to get to a new location just like this. Then I can long press down on the desired location and a, and a pin will drop with this select label on it. Tapping onto this link will geotag the photo right to that spot and then fill in all the location metadata fields in just one clean shot. When I'm done updating the metadata, I can tap on the save button and then the new metadata will get written back out to the file. Now, if you captured both TIFF and JPEG images simultaneously, both images will get updated. While we're here, let's talk about the built-in location editor that you can get to from every image. If you swipe up from the metadata details, it will open up the same map view, and then you can update the location just like you did in the Edit Metadata window. This is great if you just need to update the location information and not any of the other fields. 
editing an image at a time is easy, but what if you have a whole bunch of them that you want to make changes to? Well, we have a batch mode just for this purpose. So back in the gallery, tap and hold down on the Edit Tags button for at least one second. Then you should hear a click, and then you should see this batch selection interface. Each image will have a selection circle in the lower right-hand corner of the thumbnail, and you can tap on each image to select it as part of the batch. If you ever want to leave this mode, by the way, you can just tap and hold down on the Edit Tags button again to return to the gallery. But for now, I need to select a few images, so I'm going to go back into the Edit mode, and then I'm going to tap on a few images, and you'll notice that the circle starts turning red, and then the status bar above it updates. Once I've made my selection, I then tap on this Edit button in the top right-hand corner to enter into the Edit Metadata panel. Now, it's going to look a lot like single edit mode with a couple of exceptions. First of all, you'll see this red label indicating how many images you're about to modify in the batch. Also, the metadata fields should appear blank and ready for you to modify. You can tap on the map icon to open the location editor and make the changes to the location fields, and they'll apply to all the photos in the batch. Any changes you make into these other fields will overwrite your existing fields with one exception. We never overwrite the people metadata in this mode, and the reason for that is because you can safely add names to existing photos. If you're missing some names, you can add them without losing the existing ones. Now, once you're done, tap on the Save button, and we will write those changes out to all of the images in the batch. So that's it. That's how you edit metadata in one or more images after you've scanned them. If you're not using either iCloud or Dropbox to automatically move images to your Mac or PC, there's a way to do it using your iPhone cable and iTunes. This works the same on either Mac or Windows, so let's see how it's done. First, make sure to connect your iPhone to your computer using the USB cable, and then open iTunes. Click on this phone icon to reveal your iPhone, and then click on file sharing. From here, scroll down to your Chroma Scan icon. Your tagged images are located in the Images folder, which you can drag to your desktop to make a copy. When you open your images, you'll see the metadata embedded inside, and now these photos are searchable. So that's a quick video on how to get your images out of Chroma Scan if you're not using Cloud Sync. Once you've scanned a bunch of photos, playlists can help you use all that metadata to organize your photos into groups based on a combination of the date, the location, and the people metadata. Let's see how this works. Start by tapping on the Playlist button, and then tapping on the plus icon. From here, you'll see this interface, which allows you to refine down your search. Now, I just want to see photos of my sister and I together in the 70s, so I'll start by using this interface to pick the start and stop dates of the photos that I want to add to this group. So in my case, this is just the beginning and the end of the 70s decade. Next, I'll move over to the People tab, and then find my sister's name down on this list, and then slide her name over to reveal this button to select it. I'll then scroll down to my own name, and then do the same thing. Now notice as I added the dates and the people names, the status indicator down below showed me what my search criteria was so that I'll know as I'm building it. I could have also added locations using the same approach by using this locations tab here in the middle. When I'm done, I just tap save to name the saved search, and then it gets added to my playlists. It will then show me that I have four images that I've scanned that match this criteria of my sister and I in the 70s. As I scan more images that match this search, they'll automatically get added without me having to do anything. As I tap on this playlist, I'll be taken to a special gallery view where I see just the images that match this playlist. Now I can do anything that I could normally do in the gallery, such as pulling up this location viewer or editing this metadata further. When I'm done viewing this subset of my images, I can tap the clear button to go back to the full gallery. So there it is. Playlists are a nice way to group images together based on the date, location, and people metadata.